Hello, welcome. My name is Dr. Evelyn and this is my first live event. Hello and welcome for our very first mind body moment um, here on We Will Get Through This. I am Dr. Evelyn and I am new to this project. Um, and so today's activity is a little bit about just focusing on how our mind and our body are really physically interrelated and how we can access physical things as well as mental activities for our mind and body to influence, influence each other. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about me as we wait for a few people to maybe come on here. Um, I am a chiropractor and I work and live in Half Moon Bay, California. And my specialty with chiropractic is really helping people with stress and how that affects their system physically. Um, all chiropractic is really about the nervous system and how to support a healthy nervous system. And chiropractors read all kinds of physical signs or symptoms or movement patterns, um, all as clues to what's happening with a person's nervous system underneath. So as you know, our nervous system is in charge of a lot of things in our body. It's in charge of not only a lot of the physical things that we do, but also how we perceive the world around us. And then how that signal gets arranged in our brain and how our body responds to that. That's all um, a healthy nervous system. And so there's a lot of ways that we can support a healthy nervous system by, by both physically addressing the body and the physical system that is the nervous system excuse me, that is the nervous system, and by helping our mind be more connected to our body and make our mind-body, you know, really one thing because we can't really solve problems about how we're feeling without addressing what's happening in our body, and we can't really address problems that we're having with our body without addressing kind of what's happening emotionally to us. And that's the whole point of this mind-body um, moment exercise. Um, today's is about self-compassion in particular. So we'll just get started. Um, and I want to bring your awareness to this concept of innate intelligence. That's what we call it in chiropractic, but it goes by many names in many different traditions. And this innate intelligence is the part of us that knows what to do without us having to learn about it the way, uh, the way we learn in our conscious or educated mind, right? So everything that your body does without you thinking about it is controlled by this innate intelligence. So that's breathing, circulating blood, growing, having your cells divide, um, digesting, you know, all kinds of things that we sometimes forget are happening and sometimes forget how amazing it is that our bodies are doing this. And our innate intelligence is also, you know, our life force or chi or prana. Um, it is that force that allows us, you know, where we have an innate knowing about what we need. It's our you know, instinctual nature. It's our gut feelings. It's all of those. It's all related to these kinds of things where what would we feel if we weren't taught to feel another way? So this is the part of us that I want us to really focus in on today. And 
not only are we going to focus about it and become aware of it, we're going to learn to actually love this part of us. Okay? So this is why I call self-compassion instead of self-love or self-care or those kinds of things that you hear about often in having a full and full balanced well-being. Our innate intelligence is doing all kinds of things and even the sickest person or the most anxious person or the saddest person has more going correctly with them than they do have going, I won't even use the word, but like poorly or not functioning optimally or quote unquote wrong with them, right? In order to be alive, so much magic needs to be happening that it is, it is actually insane to me that we don't think about this stuff more and how much we take take it for granted. So the first thing that it takes to love something is to understand it, right? Or know it. You know, it's hard to love someone you don't know. So let's all take our bodies and that innate intelligence and that innate part of us and treat it like it's someone else, right? Sometimes it's easier this way. And if you are meeting this someone and they said, hey, yeah, no, my job is to literally keep you in existence every moment of every day. That's what I love to do. That's my passion. You would be like, wow, okay, thank you. You know, I'm honored. <laughs> so let's all just take a minute, take a deep breath. And say thank you, lungs for allowing me to breathe. Thank you to my red blood cells for taking that oxygen and starting to circulate it around my body. Thank you to my heart for allowing those red blood cells to circulate around my body. Thank you to my amazing design that I have capillary beds where the vessels get so thin that individual molecules of oxygen can leave my bloodstream and get into every single cell in my body every moment of every day. Wow. Right? So you can get really deep into this and this is a fun meditation if you are anatomy and physiology nerd like me. You can really start to think about everything that goes into every simple thing that we do, right? Like you can, you know, just simply point to something and be like, wow, thank you to my body that allows my brain to connect to my muscles and tell them what I would like them to do. Thank you to the muscle tendons for being attached where they belong. You know, you can go, you can go anywhere with this, right? So when we really start to build this sense of gratitude and this sense of amazement and wonder with our body and with our innate systems, um, that's the beginnings of how we start to love that system. The next step is that we really are focusing on inward function and not necessarily outward appearance. It's a lot more common to hear people say that they don't like themselves because of how they are outwardly, right? Not just of how they look physically, though that's very common, but also they might think, mm, I'm so awkward or I'm so, I don't know why I always have to say that or I wish I was more outgoing or those kinds of things that we get hard on ourselves. Let's just, when you start going there, it's really important to think about everything that you already are. You were born with that you didn't even have to try to do. And just be grateful for the vessel in which 
you are a part of because your mind and your body are connected. And if all of this is so good, then it all can't be that bad, right? So really thinking about the inward stuff and our function, everything that we, that our body and our mind allows us to do positively, right? Our, our minds allow us to understand different concepts and learn. Our minds allow us to appreciate beauty. Our minds allow us to connect with other people. Our minds allow us to, you know, plan ahead and vision and dream and invent. And so when we get kind of, we can get bogged down in, oh, why am I always thinking these anxious thoughts? Or why am I always so negative? Or why am I always this? You're not always that right? You use your mind for so much. And it's the same with our body. We can think about all the positive things that are happening more often. Okay, so the next step for self-compassion is understanding where the other person is coming from, right? Um, you know, we all know a story where, say, someone cuts us off or someone does something so rude and then we hear that, you know, they were on the way to the hospital because their grandma was sick and they didn't know how much time they had to see her or they were really stressed out and just not paying attention. It helps us to understand someone else's backstory because that makes them relatable to us and we can put ourselves in their experience. So knowing that your innate intelligence and that your body is really just here to help you live and be alive and have a vessel in which to interact with your human experience, sometimes it's easier to love that, that part of you because you know it's on your side. In my line of work, I see a lot of people whose bodies are expressing dysfunction and dis-ease and pain and they are feeling very betrayed by their own bodies and I the first thing I can remind them of is why would your body do this your body is not spiteful your body is not out to get you <laughs> Your body's only job is to sustain you in existence so that you can do the things that you want to be able to do, right? And so we have to let go of this idea that our innate is against us or our intuition is wrong and that we need to stifle all of our instincts and stifle all of our, you know, our deepest the deepest parts of us and be something else we really need to honor that because that is the part that is going to be leading you on the truest path and the more that you fight who you really are innately the more dis-ease that you're going to have in your life and dis-ease can show up in many ways whether it's physical manifestations or whether it's thought patterns and anxiety and stress. So that is another reason to have some compassion for your deepest part of yourself. And we can, when we can finally step in and see this part of ourselves, recognize it, be grateful for it, understand that it is on our side, then we can start to ask ourselves the questions of, well, how could I do something kind for this system, this person that we've impersonated over here, right? We, we did that at the beginning where we made it a different person because sometimes it's easier to think about it that way. And if you think, you know, what would be the most loving and nurturing to my body mind, to my innate intelligence, to the instinctual part of me, that might be a different answer than you would get from, um, hmm, what would make me feel better right now? What would be a little treat? What do I deserve after I worked so hard all day, right? 
we're used to being like, oh, it's ice cream, I'm treating myself, or, you know, I look great in this outfit, like, I love myself, and that's the, those are the common things that are portrayed in the media often, but if you really ask yourself, like, what would nurture this relationship between me and my innate intelligence, and what would my body love in return for all of its tireless work? It might be something more like a gentle stretch or a healthy meal or calling a friend and, you know, somebody who makes you laugh because your body is going to love laughter, right? So it, it kind of helps us filter our actions by tuning in to our body mind of what's going to serve what's going to serve that system and nothing that serves our body does not also serve our mind and vice versa so you can double up you know if if you're <laughs> you could do so, if you do something as a mental activity and you like to exercise you know you've done You've done twice for your body mind because you are one person and you can't you can't benefit one without benefiting the other, which is awesome. So we're gonna go into a little bit of an activity, just a little reflection. And that's gonna be kind of the the way that I run the mind body moment. Just a quick check-in uh, with some of you who might relate to a more physical understanding of stress and stress management and feeling and just a lot if you're a more physical person like I am um, sometimes that can be a helpful helpful take on all of this um, so we're just gonna reflect if you have a pen if you have a piece of paper cool if not if you want to write something in the comments feel free um, but if you don't want to, this is a really personal thing, so no worries. Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask you, which I already kind of asked you earlier, is what am I grateful that my body does? And another way to ask this question is, what's something that I love to do that I wouldn't be able to do without my body? right? There's a lot of things. <laughs> it's a lot of things. And unfortunately, many people don't think about this until they lose that ability. They don't think about how wonderful it is to be in the vessel that they're in until they can't move the way that they want or something isn't functioning the way that, um, the way that is normal. And so let's think about it now. Let's not wait until it's gone. Let's think about it now. I'll give you a minute to write something down, maybe think about it or share. All right. The second question is what opportunity can I create today that will allow me and to show love? to my innate intelligence, my inner, inner part of myself, to have some compassion for myself. Another way to ask this is, what would feel really good? What would feel really good? <laughs> and not in a temporary, like, oh, this ice cream feels really good as I'm eating it. But what would I what would just feel good to my soul? What would feel good to my being to do that I can do today before I go to bed? So that might be, that could look like anything, but it's generally going to be something that is supportive to your mind and to your body. Um, you know, sometimes vegging out and zoning out, those are great things and they have their time, but they don't make us feel like super good. And then lastly, when I fall asleep tonight, I will be happy that I blank. 
because feeling accomplished, feeling like we took action towards a goal is something that we all can appreciate. And the definitions of success vary between people. They're not always the same. And I think that there's a lot that we can, there's a lot of ways we can find little wins and finding little wins every day is just a way to keep ourselves positive, to keep ourselves moving forward and um, keep ourselves in a reflective state. So when I fall asleep tonight, I will be happy that I blink. And it could even be told this person that I love them or um, spent time doing this or finished this. It doesn't have to be like a super deep thing. <laughs> okay, great. So just to recap, um, I'm Dr. Evelyn and working with the whole Mind Body Moments series, I'll be trying to come on every Monday that I can unless I have something else scheduled. And just coming at you with some physiology about the mind body, some science, um, and then some activities that you can do to kind of combat stress and emotions through the whole spectrum of our through our body, through our mind, through our thoughts, through not thinking. Uh, so we're going to use all kinds of strategies, whole body strategies, I suppose, to really address stress. So next week is actually going to be a little bit more um, of a of a sciency talk <laughs> where I'm going to actually kind of diagram through what causes us to be stressed and what happens to our body when we are under stress and then all of the channels in which we can kind of stop that from being a cyclical cycle and turn it into just its normal temporary reaction so that we can get back and keep going on with our lives. I hope that you are all just breathing. I hope you all had a valuable break from this. I hope you all have found the reflection valuable and I hope that I can continue to serve you on this platform in the future. All right. Take care, everybody. Until next time. Bye.